Hi folks, welcome back to The Pulse. I'm very excited about today's video about resveratrol. It follows up a video I made just a few days ago about NMN, and I've got some new information, both about NMN, specifically refrigeration, coming from the CEO of Do Not Age, so you're not gonna wanna miss that. I also have a lot of really fresh information, hot information, about resveratrol that I know you're gonna wanna hear. So watch the whole video and you won't regret it. Now, a quick note about the Pulse channel. You may have noticed I'm about to hit 10,000 subscribers in just a short time, probably by the end of next week. I'm planning a big video and I've got some prizes to give away from Do Not Age, which they've sponsored for this video. And I look forward to having you there, so be on the lookout for that, but I wanna take this opportunity to thank you. In just over a year, hitting 10,000 subscribers is something I'm very proud of, and you should be too, because this channel is for you. Now, resveratrol is a polyphenol that's been talked about over the past couple decades quite a bit. It exists naturally in things like grapes and nuts and dark chocolate and wine. And David Sinclair had it on a list, a list after experimenting with 18,000 different molecules. They had a short list that included resveratrol and also quercetin and physetin were on the list. I'm gonna mention those also a little bit later in this video. The potential health benefits of resveratrol have been proven in many different animal studies and human studies have also shown a lot of promise for this molecule. People all over the world have reported great results from taking resveratrol. Some of the potential health benefits are it can help prevent cancer, it helps uh, your cardiovascular system, you get a healthier heart, it's an anti-inflammatory, and it's good for your liver, it promotes weight loss, and also muscle recovery. So. I took resveratrol for the first two years of my experience with supplements, and it really laid the groundwork for taking NMN and pursuing other wellness activities. In fact, the big before and after picture from 2018 to 2021 was primarily resveratrol. That was from just under two years of resveratrol. I only took NMN for three months of that time, and then I took fake NMN for seven months, which led to me making my big video last year. Now, a note about potential side effects. There are some people, and I've talked to a couple myself here through this channel, that experience nausea from resveratrol. So part and parcel in my investigatory attempts to find out the newest information about resveratrol, I did look into this side effect, and there were a couple possibilities, in fact, three different ones I'm gonna mention. One is you might have an allergy to grapes or red wine, or both. You might also have a conflict with some kind of blood thinner or other medication that you're taking. So look into those as possibilities if you are having nausea. Another possibility is you may have a fatty liver. Some people with nausea symptoms from resveratrol early on were actually experiencing one of the things that resveratrol can help fight. In fact, my fatty liver went away after the two years on resveratrol. So you might just need a lower dose. You might need to give it more time. You may wanna take it every other day to alleviate some of those nausea symptoms early on. Tip number one is interesting because I say the same thing I said about NMN. You don't need to keep it in the fridge. Now, this created quite a bit of, uh, I don't know about backlash, but a lot of comments from people saying, hey, Do Not Age recommends you keep it in the fridge. But listen to the response from the CEO. I just got this video clip this morning talking about refrigerating NMN. Um, as for NMN, the refrigeration is not required, but most people do it anyway for extra safety. For me, the most important thing you can do with your NMN is ensure the lid is replaced securely. Now that video response from Alan Graves at Do Not Age also includes several responses to questions I asked that I'm gonna be editing and posting a special video soon with the very latest information from Do Not Age and their new supplements. So as you can hear, it's not completely necessary. It's recommended as sort of a blanket recommendation, but it's not necessary. And I would say, especially if you're taking it in and out of the fridge, you don't need to refrigerate it. The reason is early on, NMN was not as stable as the modern produced NMN. It's now crystallized and dried out and it's stabilized essentially. So it can last a long time. You just wanna make sure you close that lid and also on resveratrol, keep that lid closed. And it's also important that resveratrol not be exposed to light. Tip number two is to take only pure trans resveratrol. Don't take cis resveratrol. It doesn't boost sirtuin activity. Also, it should not be brown. If it's brown, it's been exposed to light, it's been tainted, it's aged, it's deteriorated, throw it away. 
Now, I take Do Not Age Resveratrol. There are a couple other brands. I haven't tested them personally, but I know from others and through the industry insiders that they're safe to take, that they are pure trans resveratrol. So if you don't wanna go with Do Not Age, you could go with Renew by Science, you could go with Pro Health Longevity. Those are both also reputable brands that sell pure trans resveratrol. Tip number three, there's no need to overdo your resveratrol dosage. There have been benefits. As a matter of fact, there's some active debate going on right now whether you need a high dose of resveratrol or just a low dose of resveratrol. The bottom line is you can reduce that dose if you don't feel comfortable, if you don't have the budget to take a high dose of resveratrol, and you're still going to most likely experience results. I started taking resveratrol every other day. I take a little bit more than the 500 milligram dose. I take six, 700 milligrams. I take it every other day. This was to make room for taking quercetin every other day. I tried them both alone. I tried them together. And then I tried alternating days and I felt the best and I felt my energy levels and my exercise levels were the best when I alternated those two. Another side note is I do do a high dosage Fisetin flush as talked about by the Mayo Clinic and James Kirkland. I started doing that last month. I did it for three days. I felt this big energy boost. Now, yesterday, I just finished my second round of doing that again. I plan to do it monthly. And I had that same amazing energy boost beyond just more energy, but really as I explained before, like I wanted to lift even more weights. I wanted to exercise even longer. I had that extra win to keep going. I think the Fisetin high dosage monthly hit and run plan is working for me. And I'm even considering trying it a couple times a month. It's gone so well. Now resveratrol tip number four, you've probably heard this before, but it's take with a fatty food or olive oil. But what I found out recently is it's not because it's better soluble in food or fat. It is not soluble in water and it is not soluble in fat. So how are we getting it in our system if we take it with fat? Well, apparently it's part of the metabolism system. Your stomach opens up doorways, the fat passes through, and so does then the resveratrol. So that's the trick to taking it. The good news is you don't have to take the powder mixed into the yogurt or the olive oil if you don't want to. You could just take a tablet at the same time you're eating those things. Your digestive system will do the rest. Tip number five is to eat foods containing resveratrol. Now this is similar to the tip that I had in the NMN video, but it has special meaning here because while resveratrol is not water soluble, it's not fat soluble, it is alcohol soluble. In fact, you can put it in wine and drink it and you'll get a better sirtuin boost than you would by just taking it either alone or with a fatty food. I found that really interesting and that study is very interesting and promising because it really goes into line with what I was saying before about eating the foods that contain the supplements, the polyphenols, if you will, that you're taking. If you look at Do Not Age's website, all of their supplements, these polyphenols or these different molecules also exist naturally in foods and they list those. And I think that is a great shopping list for things like broccoli and avocado and nuts and even dark chocolate, wine, maybe in certainly in moderation and grapes and berries. These are all healthy things. And if you're gonna take these molecules, it just seems like common sense. It stands to reason that you would eat the foods to help your metabolism, recognize them, and absorb the polyphenols even better by eating with the foods that they exist naturally in. So try that, I think you'll really feel some great benefits. Tip number six, ignore the negativity out there. I know that all of these supplements are debated out in public and you can find arguments pro and con left and right, but there is a mountain of scientific evidence. I personally don't believe they would have spent almost a billion dollars researching resveratrol if they didn't have all of these benefits indicated by the scientific research in animals. I'm a living example of what resveratrol can do. Even if you want to just say it was somehow just placebo, which I do not believe, but if you want to suggest it was placebo, I still had the benefits. I lost the weight, I exercised more, I feel healthier, I'm, and it's inspired me to eat better and then pursue NMN, which has taken things to a whole other level. So I'm a big believer in resveratrol, and I think if you make that decision to take it, just ignore, don't be a part of this back and forth, don't question yourself, give it a chance, take it yourself, and then block out the noise. 
I would also add, be active, exercise, use it. You're taking it, treat it as exercise fuel. It gives you more energy, it helps you lose weight, and it helps you recover from exercise better. So go out and be more active and maximize that resveratrol experience. Tip number seven is to lower your expectation of fast results. Resveratrol does not have an immediate impact. I don't think anyone's reported, yeah, I felt better in a few hours. NMN can do that. NMN gets in your bloodstream very fast. Resveratrol takes more time to do its magic. You don't just get organ healing and improved liver function and heart function overnight. This is gonna take some time. A matter of fact, the first eight or nine days I took resveratrol, I had a little bit of uh, cold symptoms. I mentioned it before, minor cold symptoms. Those went away after a while. People actually told me that's probably a good thing. It means your, your body's responding to the molecule. And after two weeks, then I started to feel this uh, better muscle recovery and then more and more benefits that I just sort of noticed over time. When I took my before and after picture from resveratrol, it was by accident. Like I looked in the mirror one day and after seeing this alternate person, this alternate version of my dad in the mirror, um, suddenly I saw myself again. And then I took some selfies and I went back and compared to ones from two or three years before. And that's how really this whole channel was born because I couldn't believe the results. And then I shared them and then people were surprised as well. So give it some time and sort of find out, have that happy uh, realization one day like I did when you look in the mirror and suddenly, oh my God, there I am again. <laughs> So I wish you luck with it. Remember, subscribe, like this video, be on the lookout for that 10,000 subscriber video as well.